Many thanks to Skillshare, the generous sponsors of this video. Well, hello, and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. I was just about to say hello to you, and I spotted some really nice light on the flank of Moyle Shabod. Uh, this morning, it's a very drizzly grey Sunday morning. Well, I'm just out for a short, gentle stroll in the hills, so I thought I might as well bring you along with me. Well, no, it's quite changeable conditions this morning. I haven't seen a lot of light, uh, but that doesn't matter too much because what I've got is quite a lot of really interesting low cloud and it's scudding through reasonably quickly. And every now and then there are breaks in it and it lights up a little like that shot I just grabbed a moment ago. So I'm up behind the Penagurid Hotel, uh, just down from the Penapass car park on the flank of Snowdon. And I'm heading up the little stream to uh, Llyn Cwm Fynon, uh, which is the lake that kind of sits just in the little hanging valley on the opposite side of the Penipass car park from the bit where you walk up to Snowdon. I've already put a map up, I always put a map up, so apologies for the long-winded description, but that's kind of where I am. Uh, plenty of photo opportunities along here. I've already spotted a few uh, interesting subjects, and I'm hopeful that the rain that we're getting from time to time is going to ease off a little bit because you're not particularly weatherproofed. Uh, the camera body is, but the lens and the uh, audio equipment isn't. So I'm going to chuck you back in the bag for now and head on further up. Well, I've been really struggling with the rain today. It hasn't stopped at all, so keeping my lens dry has been a problem. But I really wanted a shot of this really nice cascade. I've got the southern flank of Glidavaur behind me, uh, and for most of the morning it's been completely invisible. The cloud has been coming down and breaking up and coming down and breaking up. So it's been quite challenging so far, and this is really the only image that I could reasonably have an opportunity to get framed up at the moment because all my lines of sight are just slabs of solid grey. Uh, but what I really like about this is the way the stream runs over this big wide slab of rock, completely spread out and broken up, and then drops straight off the lip at the front edge. Also, there's a really interesting finger of rock sitting in front of it, and that completely breaks it up. So you've got that really interesting contrast, and then the water breaking around it quite an easy uh, composition it sort of makes itself really because you can get onto this bit of rock here you can see it face on well I lied about how easy the exposure was going to be because the sun keeps breaking through and the light is changing by the second. I started out with a three-stop ND filter on to get the shutter speed where I wanted it. And I've had to switch in and out of the three-stop and my six-stop to, to keep it where I want. Um, also, as the light changes, 
and getting different highlights on different parts of the composition. So I'm really not sure what I want in the final version. So I'm going to take plenty of exposures so I've got something to work with uh, in post. And it's a habit that I got into quite some time ago where uh, if I'm working on a composition, I've always come home with 20 or 30 exposures, ostensibly exactly the same, uh, because I want to try different settings. I want to make sure I've got plenty to work with. I want to adjust the composition ever so slightly. And uh, there are times when my photography isn't as it was when I was saying hello to you earlier, where I'm just reacting to something that's going on with the light or the clouds or whatever it may be. A composition like this allows me to take my time over it. Um, and I've said it before in previous videos, I can easily spend 30 minutes to an hour on a single, uh, a single image because uh, I enjoy it and I don't like to be rushed. And if I can take my time over something and create something that I'm really happy with, uh, then I think it's worth spending the time. Um, and of course, I'm here for a hike. Of course, I'm going to head on up the valley, although those clouds are coming in again. So who knows quite what's going to happen next. Well now, as you can probably tell, that didn't kind of go to plan, I'm afraid. Um, shortly after I left you up on the hillside there, um, the clouds came down and for the most part, I couldn't see more than about 50 feet in front of me. Uh, I headed on up to the lake and up onto the summit that I was going for, which is Moil Berdev, uh, but I couldn't see a thing. And I hung around there for about two hours before I thought, no, let's forget about it for today. There'll be plenty more times where we can come back and get those pictures I was after and I'll take you with me, of course. So I thought what we might have to do in order so that you don't feel shortchanged uh, with this particular video is let's head back and have a look at what I did manage to get. Now, when Skillshare got in touch and said, would I be interested in them sponsoring a video? I was really flattered because I've been a premium member of Skillshare for quite some time. It's great value for money. An annual subscription works out at less than $10 a month and you get access to thousands of creative classes. Now, a Skillshare membership means that you've got full access to everything they have to offer, all sorts of really interesting and creative skills. Of course, photography and video production. I'm currently taking a class by Thomas Frank in uh, media productivity. It's really interesting. Plus, you get to interact with other people taking the class and the tutor. But there are topics ranging from fine art and music to technical skills like web development and UX design. So there's bound to be something there that you'll find interesting. And the first thousand subscribers who click the link below get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity too. OK, so back at home, got my gear drying out uh, and I've got the images loaded into Lightroom to go through them with you. What I thought I'd do is that I'll just show you the raw files and have a chat about what I was thinking when I captured them and also show you one or two that I'm going to discard and explain why. Uh, and uh, and then I'll obviously process the images and they'll be in a gallery at the end. Do you know, that reminds me that um, my watch time seems to drop off a cliff around about the time in my videos where I say, oh, and thank you very much for joining me uh, and all that sort of thing. And so an awful lot of people that watch my stuff don't get to see the images at the end. You've got to wonder why. I mean, I don't care. It makes no odds to me at all. But you've got to wonder, somebody that's watching uh, a video about photography gets to the point where the photographer says thanks for watching and then assumes that's it, it's all over and they haven't seen any pictures yet. Anyway, so hopefully that tip you off if you're watching my channel, there's usually a gallery of uh, images right at the end. So let's get onto the computer and have a look at what I got. 
So let's start with this one from right at the beginning of the video. I'd set the video camera up, I'd done my sound check and I was just about to start talking when I noticed the cloud starting to break up right on the summit of Moel Shabbat. Uh, and as you can see, it, you can probably understand why it caught my eye and why I felt the need to break off and grab a shot of it. Um, I'm going to leave the histogram and the exposure settings visible as we go through these so you can have a quick glance at it and see what I was doing with it. Um, but with this one, uh, straight away I'm looking at it and I'm just going to pretend I'm about to develop it just to show you what I'd have in mind for it. I'm going to take that away and I might even run it down to a square crop, take a bit away from this side as well. Uh, yeah, something along those lines, I think. Might just move it a little like that. I probably won't crop any sky out. I might well take a little bit of the foreground out as well. Maybe something like that. Don't know yet. Um, by the time you've got to the end of this video, uh, you, you'll you see what I did with it in the end. But that's what I would have in mind for this sort of thing. Now, I've got a couple of images of the big cascade that I was talking you through, uh, and I just wanted to show you this one. This was one of the earlier shots that I took when I was experimenting with shutter speeds. And as you can see, this is a 15th of a second. Uh, and I could tell straight away that there was too much grain in this water. Um, it wasn't as smooth as I really wanted it. Now, I do like the way it's running down over the rock here. Um, but what I wanted was that lovely curtain of water effect. And so by extending my shutter speed just a little, and as you can see with this, I've also recomposed it, um, it gives me those really nice streaks. And this is at a third of a second. Uh, and I had to put my six stop on uh, to get that shutter speed. So even though the conditions were very gloomy, uh, it was still actually quite bright. Uh, and with this shot, again, I'm probably going to recompose it slightly, uh, but not a great deal. So uh, the finished article will look something like this in terms of the composition. And once I'd finished with this shot and got what I felt was something usable, I then spent probably about half an hour, 45 minutes working this whole area. There's a couple of particular shots that I was hoping to get, uh, but they, they just didn't work out. Let me explain why. This one, I really liked the composition of this one. The problem I have with it is it's no use to me at all because of that great big mass of white. The problem with this shot is the water's moving so fast that even though to the naked eye when you're there, there's texture in that big uh, diagonal of water. The problem is that even uh, with any sort of uh, long shutter, it just turns into a big white splodge. And I didn't want to freeze the cascade behind it. The problem is that if I try and mix that by taking two shots at different shutter speeds, it's just not going to look right. So unfortunately, I just felt it was better to abandon this shot. And I think that part of the reason why I spend so much time with uh, locations like this is looking at what the possibilities are uh, and then discounting the ones that just aren't going to work out so I can concentrate on the ones that might. Another one that failed for the same sort of reason was this. I liked the composition. I liked the way the water is squeezed in between these really imposing rocks. Um, and I also felt that I'd quite like a shot from here uh, in, in portrait mode. But again, that big mass of water, there's just not enough variance in it to make uh, an engaging shot. Now, unlike the previous two images I just showed you, I think I can get away with this big slab of white in this one because um, it's actually demonstrating the force of this water running down from behind the rock, hitting the pool and then swirling around in the pool. And what I've been able to do with this uh, without clipping my histogram, I've still got uh, plenty of light and shade in here that I can work with when I'm processing it. Also, I really like this area behind it with a more subtle cascade just running down and complementing the main flow. And I also particularly wanted to get the context of it with the peak up here in the top there. That's the flank of Glidavach. Here's another example of the white water simply not having enough 
uh, texture in it to be able to do anything with it. Now, even though you can see from the histogram it's not clipped, uh, that's not really the point. It's still a great big slab of white, and I just it just doesn't work for me, I'm afraid. But stepping back from the previous image, where this bottom quadrant is what we were looking at, to put it in its broader context in the landscape and sitting below the cascade that we were photographing earlier, I think that works much better and it does show the scale of the the watercourse in this particular area. However, I came in a little tighter for my composition that I'm going to work with. This is the one that I think is, is stronger uh, because I've still got the context of the backdrop of the mountains. I like the fact that you can see the low cloud and it's it's conveying the general feel of the conditions that we had there. But it's also giving more prominence to the water. We can see the cascades. And even though there's still this big slab of white, um, that when it's blended in with the whole image, I think it will be uh, a better image and I'd be more inclined to share this. Um, this is kind of strange for me because I normally don't go into this sort of detail. I'll just take you on a hike and show you some images and I might talk about what I'm doing when I'm in the field. But usually uh, I do give a lot of thought to what I'm going to have to work with. I mentioned when I was out that I might take 20 or 30 exposures, ostensibly the same image. So I've got a lot to work with. Um, but I usually have uh, some idea of what I'm going to do with the image. It, very little of what I shoot is completely speculative. Um, so finally, uh, as I was heading off the hill, having given up, I, I headed all the way up here. And that's where I spent a couple of hours pretty much sitting on a rock uh, in a fog bank waiting for something to happen. Fortunately, it didn't until I headed back down to the car. Um, but the final image on the way back down as things were just starting to clear up is this one. Um, and it's just a handheld as I was walking down, uh, ISO 500, thousandth of a second. Uh, I had my 12 to 100 Pro lens with me today, so that's what this was shot with at 34 millimeters. Um, and again, I have an idea of exactly what I'm going to do with it. And I had it as I was shooting it. Um, the light on these clouds and the way they were breaking up as they moved up uh, uh, Nant Gwynant, below where I was coming down off the hill, um, really caught my eye. Uh, and this raw file as it stands doesn't do it any justice at all. But what I had in mind straight away was to kind of letterbox it rather like I did with my image of Trevan uh, from a couple of videos ago. And I'm thinking of something like this, really compress it down because what's interesting to me is this lovely curve of the foreground layer, then these other layers. And I might just leave a little bit more sky in because there was quite a lot going on. Uh, I don't know about this rock in the foreground. I'm really in two minds about whether it's distracting or whether it's just something interesting in the foreground. And I could clone it out because the surroundings are uh, so textured, you'd never be able to see, even though it's such a large area to clone out. But I think I might leave it in, um, if only because it's quite a common thing in the mountains to just have a boulder half buried in the ground. Um, they're all over the place. And I suppose that even though I'm not trying to create a record shot, uh, it, it, it's there. And I don't know. Tell me what you think. Would you clone it out or would you leave it in? Uh, I, I think in hindsight, I'll probably leave it in, although it won't be so distracting because by the time I finish my treatment of this image, uh, it will be pretty much toned right down in the foreground. There'll, there'll be a, a, a gradient filter running along this line here and I'll be darkening down this foreground quite a lot. So it's not going to show up quite as much as that. But uh, yeah, um, I haven't really made my mind up on that one yet. <laughs> You'll have to watch to the end to find out what I decide. So uh, I think that, yeah, that's the last of the images. So it's time for me to get on with processing these images and it's very likely that the finished articles will look considerably different to what I've just shown you, uh, which was the whole point of sharing the raw files with you. 
I hope it's given you some insight into what's going through my head when I'm out and about with a camera. I'm not sure how useful it will be to you, but nevertheless, I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe now and join me next time? Cheers. <laughs>